Okay. So, frontal bone in green. We have two parietal bones. Well, obviously, we have two frontal bones, I should say, as well, but you just can't see the separating point between them. The parietals, uh, the occipitals back here, and the temporals are in uh, purple, so two temporals. Then we have zygomatic bone in blue, the maxilla, two maxillas is this kind of peachy colour. There's uh, the two nasal bones here, and the, uh, so it's kind of the bridge of the nose, and in dark green are the two lacrimal bones. Uh, we also have the sphenoid bone, which is also in uh, yellow. And the ethmoid bone is in red, and you can see that up through the uh, the top of the nose. And um, the blue inside the nose is called the inferior nasal concha, here and here. And the separating inferior part of the nose is called the vomer. So it's it's in bright orange, the vomer. And you can see a little bit of the vomer here, the back that separates the two nasal cavities. And then this grey one is the last one. It's called the palatine bone. Okay, so things to know. Um, if we put on the skull cap, we can talk about these sutures. This is the coronal suture, right across the middle here, and it separates the frontal bones from the parietal bones. This is the sagittal suture, which separates the two parietal bones from each other. Back here is the lambdoid suture. A suture is just a joining, so it's a fused joint. And this separates the occipital from the two parietals. And then lastly, this suture here is called a squamous suture. That separates the temporal bone from the parietal bone. And this is called a squamomastoid. It's, just, it's, it's a continuation of squamoid. Squamous, I should say. And this area here is called the pterion. There's a silent P at the beginning of that. And it's, it's the joining of four bones. Uh, sphenoid parietal, temporal, frontal. It's the weakest point of the skull because four bones join at one spot and it's quite, it's quite a weak part if you get a blow or some sort of trauma to here. Okay. If we take off the skull cap, we'll have a look uh, in this direction. So we have an anterior cranial, cranial fossa, a middle cranial fossa that has the Turkish saddle in the middle of it, but this whole thing is the middle. And back here is the posterior cranial fossa. In cranial fossa, we have this bone here called the ethmoid bone. And we have the uh, cribiform plates, which are the kind of depression here on either side. This looks like a little peanut in the middle. And on the top of the peanut is the cristagalli, which is like the cockerel's headpiece along here, where that, it's kind of gone white on the skull because it's been touched so often. But this is the ethmoid bone. Um, this yellow bone, again, is the sphenoid. And there's quite a lot of holes in the sphenoid. The left here in the anterior fossa, so here and here, and the greater wing is down here in the middle fossa. So it's like the biggest, bigger wing of a butterfly. Some people say this bone looks like a butterfly. So let's talk about the holes. Well, before the holes. This area here looks like a handlebar on either side is the anterior clinoid process. This hole here is the optic canal. And um, underneath the clinoid process, if you can see in that way, there's a kind of a diagonal, like a slash. This is the superior orbital fissure. Um, and if I come in from underneath through the orbit, you can see hopefully the pen in the superior orbital fissure there. Just below the superior orbital fissure, we have a hole here. This is called foramen rotundum. Then we have foramen ovale. And lastly, foramen spinosum. So it's rotundum ovale spinosum, or ROS, all on the sphenoid. And lastly, there's a hole here called foramen lacerum in the centre. There's a large kind of bony, uh, it's an unusual shape. It looks like a saddle and it's called the Turkish saddle. And on here sits, or in here sits the pituitary gland. So it's also called tuberculum. Uh, tuberculum cellae, I think, is the anterior part of it. Or the cella tursica is the Latin for Turkish saddle. But just call it Turkish saddle, that's perfectly okay. So you have all those holes on one side and the same holes exactly on the other side. So if we move back, you can see purple. This is the temporal bone. So part of the temporal bone is in the middle cranial fossa, part of it's in the posterior cranial fossa. We do have quite a big, um, uh, what would we call it, like a, a thickening of this bone here. And inside the thickening is the inner ear. So if I go around to the outside 
of the bone, we have this hole here, which is the external acoustic meatus, which is your ear, your outside ear hole. Um, if, you if you go in there, you end up inside this bony uh, kind of thickening, and in there would be the trochlea, hammer, anvil, and stirrup in, of the inner ear. And there's a hole here on the other side of that, which is called the internal acoustic meatus, where the um, it's the vestibulocochlear nerve comes out and, and, and up to the brain to bring its sensory information about hearing. Um, so you've got obviously the same on right and left. And we move back into the posterior cranial fossa, we're now mostly on the occipital bone. This very large hole here is foramen magnum for the end of the medulla oblongata, which becomes spinal cord and passes out um, to, down through the, the, the vertebra as, as the spinal cord. Um, you can see that there's like a double hole here between temporal bone and occipital bone. And this double hole, one is for the carotid artery making its way up with blood supplied to the brain. And the other half hole is for the jugular vein bringing blood from the brain back down to the heart. So these two, one of them, one half is the carotid canal and the other half is the jugular, uh, the jugular foramen. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's kind of it. If I turn around to the other side, there's another couple of little holes here on either side of the foramen magnum. We have what should be a hole here, but on this skull it's not full thickness. But where I have my pen here is called a condylar canal. And over here is the hypoglossal canal. That is a full thickness hole. That's for the hypoglossal nerve making its way over here to the tongue, which is uh, in the mouth, obviously. And then this bony prominence here is called the uh, articular process um, for the joint between the occiput and C1. Um, and there's one last little spot here called the pharyngeal tubercle which attaches some soft tissue ligamentous structures that attach to the pharynx which is right here very close to this spot. Um, in this position we can see the mastoid process and we can see the styloid process which looks like a knitting needle. We can see the joint surface or the joint fossa for the mandible which makes the TMJ, temporomandibular joint. And we can also see the pterygoid plates of the sphenoid bone. So the whole thing is called the pterygoid plate but we have a lateral pterygoid plate and a medial pterygoid plate on the left and we also have a lateral and a medial on the right. And in between is a pterygoid fossa. The hamulus is a little, a little hook off the edge of one of them. Um, and there's a scaphoid fossa, which is part of the pterygoid fossa. But you don't need to know that much information. Um, just again, this is the palatine bone in grey. In uh, orange is the vomer. Um, and the rest is maxilla up here. Okay, so if we move around the front, I'll put a skull cap on. We have the this area here, which is the top of the orbit. Uh, so there's the supraorbital notch here for a nerve that passes through there, either into the eye or back out again. The glabella is the part in between. And you have these superciliary arches, which is where your eyebrows would grow. It's like a little bony shelf just above the margin of the orbit. Um, here we have the lacrimal bone. So there's a lacrimal foramen for, the, for your tear duct to come out through there. Um, what else do we have? This hole here is called the infraorbital foramen, which is on the maxilla. Mm, there sometimes is a little hole here in the middle of the of the zygoma, which is I can't remember what it's called. It's not terrible. I don't think it's on the exam. <laughs> um, yeah, and the alveolar process of the maxilla is where the teeth are all inserted into. So all your the upper the teeth of the upper your upper teeth, I suppose, are all inserted into your maxilla. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the skull. Sure. Uh, 
inside the nose, this is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, which is right in the centre. And these are the superior nasal concha. There should be a middle nasal concha, but it's not, the, it's not visible on the skull. It's like as if the, the superior and middle have merged. So the middle nasal concha, we won't ask. It kind of doesn't really exist on this example. And then the inferior nasal concha is in blue. It's a separate bone. It developed separately to the ethmoid. So, yeah, that's it. So, three different vertebral levels, cervical, thoracic, lumbar. Uh, we could ask you to outline the differences between, or we could ask you to choose one, we'll say, which one of these is lumbar and how do you know? So, if we start with lumbar, um, we know this is lumbar because of the thickness and the broadness of the vertebral body. It's the biggest of them all. Um, we also know because the spinous process is roughly at the same level as the transverse process. Um, and we also know because of the orientation of the facet joints, which are kind of U-shape, but in some parts of the lumbar spine, they do look like they're coming back to more this shape. So this one is like this, but it does curve. Some of the other ones are a little bit more like this. So we say like the, the gable ends of a house. Um, it has a pretty short, straightforward spinous process. But really the reason we know is because it's so big and thick. That's kind of it. This is a T-spine. T-spine is slightly different. The body is not as big as the lumbar, but it's definitely bigger than cervical. Um, we say that the um, vertebral foramen is quite circular. Um, and we also note how long the spinous process is and how it's directed, uh, we could say it's south, or we say it's caudally. Um, and we, this is where our rule of threes comes in because spinous process is in a very different place to transverse process as opposed to here in the lumbar or here in the cervical. The other way of knowing would be the fact that the facet joints are orientated like this. They're orientated in this direction. So we said it was like um, the front wall of a house, if, if you remember that. Um, yeah, so that's trans, uh, thoracic spine. And then lastly, cervical spine is the smallest of them. It's got the smallest body. The bodies do come up into this little uh, lip on either side. It's called the unconnect process. Uh, but really the big thing that's different here are, is this hole. We've got a hole over in the, what would be the transverse process. Transverse process isn't very big, especially compared with this one or this one. Um, and there's a hole in it. And this is the hole called foramen transversarium. And it's for the